Hello. Thanks. Thanks for possibly listening to me today. Um, so let's let's start off with. Um, excuse me. Is that a little better? Let's start off with um, how you can. Before I even talk about the problem, how you can reproduce the problem. Um, so the best way to contact us, there's an IRC channel for Compute Express Link on OFTC. Um, there's a really cool script that's maintained by Vishal Verma, who's in our group, uh, which you need to download an out-of-tree QMU for right now. But with that, if you build that, you can um, easily run all of the workloads that we're going to talk about today. And finally, the patches are on that list for any of the work in progress stuff. Any questions about, about that? OK, so since I'm new to this domain, I, I wanted to spend a couple slides making sure I understand everything correctly. So if, if something sounds wrong in the next two slides, please um, yell really loud. So there's this top level, so there's these things called struct resources. And they can represent several different things. But there's one important instance of this. Oh, I, should, I guess I'll stand here. There's one important instance of this called um, IOMEM resource, which represents all of your host physical address space in a system. And that's kind of cool. Uh, everything seems to work OK today. But just in general, resources are this tree-like structure. You allocate, if you want new space, you allocate out of a parent resource. Resources can have siblings, and they can have children. Um, so hopefully that, that my understanding there is correct. The, the lifetime of resources is generally you have some sort of boot firmware that will build up a memory map. It has this intimate knowledge of what ranges do what in a system. And so it passes that along in you know, whatever platform specific way you want. EFI is sort of my, well, I guess EA20 is sort of where I, I learn about this stuff. But you, you can understand that um, BIOS knows something. It has some mechanism to pass it along. There's some handshake between OS, and OS pulls it out. So you typically will have some architecture-specific code that's able to read this thing, and it says, oh, I'm an EFI kind of system, and I, I see these ranges. Let me go and insert these resources. Um, you might have some platform-specific drivers. One good example that's relevant to this conversation is the NFIT driver. So it's given a bunch of information via ACPI. It says, hey, this range is persistent. Let's go and add that. You might have bus drivers like PCI that say, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a bridge or whatever, and here's my physical address window, and devices underneath me may allocate out of that. And then ultimately, you'll have either, and I, I don't, from the architecture side of this, being an x86 person, I don't really know many use cases where x86 starts allocating these resources, but I've, I've seen in the code, you can see request resource from some of these architectures, and um, generally, drivers will, will consume them. So you can imagine, for instance, a PCI driver um, you know, w wanting to pull out uh, some of the memory that the PCI bus driver may have, have surfaced. So let me, let me say what I expect from BIOS, and this is not necessarily the same thing as what BIOS can and can't do. Uh, but in general, I expect BIOS to say, I have these volatile capacities of DDR, and these are their physical address ranges. Uh, additionally, I expect BIOS to say, for CXL memory capacities, I have the same exact thing, except there's some complexity around interleaving. Uh, you might have platform-specific ranges that are reserved, and you can't touch those. And the, the main thing that I guess we don't expect is BIOS to map persistent capacities. Not that they can't, but in general, the OS is um, the primary actor who will, who will map those capacities. So it, 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 it's, you know, if you're looking at EFI memory map that you might be getting in from BIOS, um, and you have a range of host physical address space that's dedicated to persistent memory that's not like the older NVDIM stuff, I would not expect to see host physical address space allocated for that. So ho hopefully that was clear. I guess I don't really know what the level of understanding of CXL in the room is, so it, please feel free to stop me if anyone has questions. So on the left, um, you can see this is running in QMU today. Uh, the CXL tool is updated. You can see there are two host physical address ranges that BIOS has conveyed. In, in this case, there's not really BIOS doing this. It's some QMU. I don't want to call it hacks, but maybe not the most elegant things. And you can, you can see that there's one range starting at B9 bajillion, and it's of four gigs, and it can do persistent and volatile. Um, and the number of targets has to do with interleaving. You can ignore it for 
the, this conversation. Uh, and then there's another range, C9 bajillion, also four gig, and it can do all that stuff. And so um, I call CFMWS, it's sort of like this sideband memory map. So instead of going through the EFI mechanisms, um, it, it's conveying this same kind of information, and in this case, it's an ACPI specific way. CFMWS is a CXL fixed memory window structure. So there's n number of these for a given platform, and um, it, it's passed along as an, as an ACPI table. This is actually a subcomponent of another of a table called the CEDT. Um, the thing I'll point out for further conversation, hot plug doesn't do anything to this. These are fixed from once BIOS boots. So if you want to hot plug, BIOS had better have given you enough space for that hot plug memory that you're going to want later. And if you don't have enough, that's too bad. You can't do anything. So they are, even though they're coming in kind of after the fact of normal BIOS memory map handoff, they are fixed throughout a boot. And so we have, we have a driver now called CXL ACPI, which reads this thing, and the kind of topic that we're going to get into is what should it do when it reads this thing. And we have code today that's doing something, but I don't know what the right thing is. Oh yeah, so that's the other point I'll make. I don't have an answer to this. This is just a problem, not an answer. Okay. Um, so when I first started working in this, and I was doing the QMU code, I made the QMU memory windows be above the SysRAM ranges, and so everything played really nicely, and I didn't think there would be a problem. Um, in this example, so on the left, you have your traditional system stuff, and you know I, I'm ignoring kind of the PCI here, because it's you can think of it as the same as system RAM for, for this case, but you... Um, you know, you, you, you have chunks of, of memory that may be busy or not, you have stuff that's reserved, and then you might have free host physical address space for whatever. And then in addition, you have these windows that BIOS passed to us, and, and you can go and create regions out of those. Or maybe bio. well, yeah, actually that's the easiest way to think about it. So in this case, like you just saw, there's, there's two windows, and you can create regions in one, and the other one we didn't create. This all works just fine, because in this case, our, our, our CXL driver can manage that host physical address space and doesn't ever have to mess with the rest of the host physical memory. So IOMM resource gets to just do whatever it was doing before. Um, as you know, provided nothing comes along and does an insert resource that stomps on our CFMWS host physical address space. But as far as I can tell, that's not a real uh, uh, an issue in practice. As it turns out, that's not how things are likely, well, actually, let me step back. If you had a platform that only had persistent capacities on it, for CXL persistent capacities, it might actually look like this. It wouldn't be unheard of to say, like, you have DDR in your low host physical address space, and BIOS is going to make a bunch of these windows for your future persistent capacities. Cool. And, like, I went into this with a, with a real persistent memory bent. So, like, this made sense. But in reality, you'll have um, volatile capacities, and this is more what you might expect to see. So in this case, let's say you have a CFMWS that starts at host physical address zero to whatever. Um, that little, this little gap right here, maybe, maybe that's DDR, I should have put a box. And then maybe you have some CXL volatile memory. So in this case, you actually do have CXL host physical address space allocated as a region that is now intersecting with your IOMM resource physical address space. Um, because BIOS has passed to us this thing as memory. It just looks like SysRAM to us. So now we have, okay, and, and, and we'll get into the, the, the problem with that in a little bit, but so like let's say right here if you wanted to create a new region, a volatile capacity, you, you could certainly do that. Um, and one might say, well, okay, what should we do with IOMM resource in that case? And, and that's, that's really the, the question that we'll get to. So just to like expand on that a little bit, while you know, this thing might be fairly sane for persistent only, and this thing might be what you'd actually, so, and let's say this is like a persistent capacity, for instance, and this thing is something you might actually see in a real system, um, this is also possible. So it's all, it's all you know, you, you really can 
get anything from BIOS, and we can't, there's no constraints based on what they tell us. So in this case, like, for some reason, they, they decided, BIOS decided to give us this, this range of, of memory that, you know, the OS incorporated, and it says, okay, I have this, but it also mapped some part of that as a region, and it used up the entire window for that. Okay, so hopefully that was enough background to discuss the problem. And again, I don't have a solution. Uh, well, I guess we did post something, but I don't have a real solution. Oh, we already got hands, okay. Oh, one second. I think he's, you good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh, the question is, why would you want the Excel address space be a part of IOM memory source? Um, I don't. <laughs> However, so, if you go if you go back to this kind of situation, I don't really see how you can avoid it. So the part of the system RAM actually lives in CXL back to memory. Is that yes. The, so BIOS, we don't know uh, when OS boots. You don't know, but all we know is BIOS gave us an, an EFI memory map entry that says this is this is system RAM. Okay. Looks a bit weird, but yeah. I, I mean, the I think the point that you need to not you personally one needs to incorporate is BIOS has the ability to do anything it wants really in terms of what it tells us. So when it's all persistent, I think it's a really easy story. Once BIOS is starting to do things with volatile capacities and just telling us this is regular memory, it gets more complicated especially because it has to live in, in these windows. And, and don't forget here that, don't forget here that you can think of, like I think people are thinking of CXL in this model of it being, you know, some kind of add-in card that's something that you add onto a system later and it's not really like part of the core system. But there are other people talking about maybe the only RAM in your system that you have is CXL attached. And so like in that case, there wouldn't be any possible way to have the kernel even boot without having, you know, an IOM resource cover CXL area because there isn't any RAM other than CXL attached RAM. So we need to stop thinking of CXL as being like, you know, some other thing that gets added to the system. It really is. I mean, it really could be the memory in the system. Yeah, that's thanks, Dave. Yeah, David. So yeah, in in, in my humble opinion, um, like. The I.O. mem resource would describe everything, and you would actually want to have some kind of a layout where you have the devices on the first layer, and then like have some kind of a split of the system RAM region. So if you, if you like, your BIOS gave you a system RAM region that is bigger than the device, then you have to split it and reorganize, but you can always punch in these details later. Uh, essentially, what, what I've been doing for Verder Mem is that I have like a, a, a system RAM region that's not busy, but that's just like the container for everything that might be in that device range. And when I actually hot plug memory, I insert a system RAM region in that container. So you actually have like a topology that says, yeah, like this is my physical address space. My device lives here, but within that device, I'm actually like have this portion, for example, be system RAM. Um, so the, the main issue, um, Let's see, did I have one that represents that kind of? Well, I guess not really. But the, the main issue that, that started the conversation was you can do that. And then, uh, so, so the second bullet is the problem. There's now this device private memory APIs that try to walk through the host physical address space. Yeah, that, that's just broken. I well, mean. so that's where. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, I already had my my nightmares network. how that would work with Word or Mem, because you cannot just take anything from your, like, uh, address space where something else lives and try to reuse it. That's just broken. So we have a proposal <laughs> on the list where basically we do what you're saying, and we, we kind of have an upper maximum. So if you take all the CFMWS address spaces, we say, okay, nothing, if anything's scanning through host physical address space, it can't take any of this. If you want anything above that, go ahead. And um, so there's a long discussion here. I actually haven't read the whole thread. Dan, Dan's been, Dan Williams has been a, a lot of it, and Jason. So yeah, if you want to chime in on, on what the maybe the feedback has been on that, because I, I, I'm of the same opinion, but it seems like the community doesn't agree. Yeah, I mean, I mean no, well, yeah, I, mean, I think we all agree that we definitely don't want device private memory to allocate inside of, uh, inside of CFMWS. 
Uh, but the, the question is how we do it. Um, it, it I mean, I, al I think we also, I think also most everybody agrees that we, it would be really nice if, if uh, IOMM resource tells the whole truth and there's not something on the sideband. But yeah, I, I, I might want to talk to you, David, more about like how it gets uh, represented internally. I thought there were places in the, uh, I, I thought there were, maybe I'm wrong, I thought there were places in the kernel that depended on system RAM being the top level resource, that if system RAM is like three levels down, it causes problems. I think I fixed most of these <laughs> by now. But yeah, like initially, like what we had is like only system RAM that would live on the top layer would be considered, for example, for KX and what's or not. But I think we, we fixed most of these. Um, I think like what we actually would want to have is some kind of a placeholder, like this is a device. And unless you're using like a special ABI function to request memory within such a region, you're not going to get it. So if you have like device private scanning, you would stumble over a device region and you would say, yeah, well, I cannot take anything of that that already is reserved by somebody else. It's not busy, but it's reserved in the space. Yeah. And that's, that's essentially what RudoMem tries doing, but it's also not complete in respect, for example, to device private. So it's, I, I, so like a flag, right? I try I tried to do something like this. It gets a little bit messy if you look at this case, because you want to say, hey, I have this CFMWS thing and it's from zero to whatever, but there already exist resources that are in that range. And so it's not trivial. You, there's a, you can try and reparent things. So if, yeah, so it looked like when I looked at it, reparenting, well, let me start off also for people in the room who aren't aware. Struck resource has existed forever. Like it's, it's like older than me. Well, not that old, but it's almost older than me. And I've never seen anything reparent resources. So there was definitely a concern for me that it's like, maybe that you can't do that. Willie says that's not true. Uh, so there's um, insert resource, which, so what we had on PA. It can rate. consume one, it can consume one. So if you had, if you had, you're right, you're right. You can, it will like grow it to, um, so like if in this example you could, I'm sorry to cut you off, you could do it. However, if you had multiple, so if I had another sysram here, or whatever, it, it wouldn't work because these are two separate resources, and and at least as it works today, it can't it can't manage more than one. Okay, so let's fix that. So we, the the original problem that we had was uh, we 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 were discovering things in the wrong order, and this this was on PA risk. So you don't even care about the, the original <laughs> problem that we were having. But basically, we we, we were discovering uh, thing, device device A and then devices C and D, and then we were discovering device B, which was the parent of C and D. Yeah. So I thought we actually did reparent more than one, but apparently we're in a report, we, if, if you say we don't have that code, then we don't have that code. Um, but there's no, re but it, it's kind of legitimate, right? That, you, that maybe firmware gives us devices in the wrong order, and that we find A, C, D, yeah. B, and then we have to insert B between A and C, D. And, and, and C and D get found, found fine because they're both children of A. Yeah. It's just that they're grandchildren of A, not actually children of A, and, and we need to insert a layer in between them. Yeah. So the, the I mean, I can go back and double check, but, but just to make sure the agreement here is, so this, this thing would become the top level resource. Uh, it, well, I guess, can, oh, I didn't, I can't edit, but you'd have IOMM resource grow to the full size of CFMWS, IOMM resource would sit below that. Is that generally? Oh, I thought IOMM resource was the root of the tree, but. Yeah, uh, yeah, so flip. So, so, you, so yeah, so you, yeah, you, you flip, you, you grow IOMM resource and reparent it above CFMWS zero. Okay, and, and then system in, RAM. And this one. All the, all the entities that are currently IOMM resources children become the children of the CFMWS resource. And there's a flag there that tells, well, somehow we still need to shut to device private memory out, but I, I think you can just add the flag for that and it should be fine. Yeah, no, I, I, think, I think device private literally looks for anything that has no entry, which was, which was always dodgy, and it always made everybody's skin crawl, but, uh, and now CFM does, CFMWS finally breaks it, but I think as long as we have that, it, that range in, in uh, IOMM resource, then device private memory will leave it alone. It, 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 will, it, will, it will try to, magically think that anything else that's not in there is, is okay. Which is still, still dodgy, but at least doesn't conflict with, with yeah. CXL. 
There are, and I, I'm, I'm almost positive that uh, re resource APIs support this today, but there are constraints that the spec imposes where you need to allocate host physical address space above a certain amount. Um, but I, I, I am pretty sure that's there. You can have a start for that. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's fine with me. There, there was, there's, I don't know if there were any arguments on the bridge with that. And I don't know if anybody wants to. So the struct resources themselves, I'm a little, like I don't have the history, but um, they're kind of wonky. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, it has its own embedded link list implementation for the siblings, and so I'd really prefer not to touch it. So if anybody else wanted to do that, that'd be cool. Um, so just, uh, I, have, I have two two things. Um, one of them is I just want to make sure I'm clear on this. We're, what we're saying is we want to change things a little bit so that IOMIM resources is the one source of truth for, for reserving things and figuring out ranges, right? That sounds good to me, if that's the case. That makes a lot of sense, because otherwise it's, you have two competing systems that oh. don't talk to each other and you're doomed. Okay, so if you do that, that's great. Um, the other one is an, is an idea, a little bit fuzzy here, but um, the zone device thing started off as a hack and, and, it, and it still is. And uh, can we, I know IOM in resource is supposed to be something you figure out early, but could we make zone device integrate in so it, it takes out, uh, you know, it becomes an IOMIM resource? Uh, no? Okay. No, well, I mean, no, no, zone, zone device is just a hack to to get struck page. It's, it's, so it's it's after, the, it's it's taking any random IOMIM resource and then annotating it with struck page. Yeah, that's today. But, but, so it, I guess, I guess uh, what, 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 what are you wanting that's not there today? That's kind of off topic, too. <laughs> Yeah, it, what I want is um, for zone device to take out an IOMAM resource that matches the range that it wants so that it plays, it, it fits into this system. It would have to move things around to do that. No, all, all, the, uh, all the zone device users today, they, they, do, they do request region. So you'll, you'll see, anybody who's using zone device, you'll, you'll see a new entry pop in to the IOMAM resource later. Um, but. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah they, 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 should, they, they should be doing that. Um, um, I don't know, like, yeah, struct resource is a very old data structure. We have, we have, people, we have people in the room that love to add uh, new data structures. Is it, time, is, is it time for a new data structure besides struct resource, or just keep hacking on it? I don't want to. I started trying to do this, and I... It, it's, it's, I, a maple, I it's a maple tree, right? <laughs> it's range based. The the amount that struct resource has changed in the last twenty years is like. And, and Willie was saying he has a patch right here. You said twenty year old patch. That's outstanding. I, 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 I'm, I'm the old patch I'm doing was doing in Well, you shouldn't have said anything if you didn't want me to bring it up. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, for, the, for those on the stream, yeah, Andrew Morton's been carrying this patch of mine for 20 years, and I was kind of hoping you, Ben wouldn't bring it up, because he might hear, hear this and say, oh, yeah, I should just drop that patch. It's been 20 years. We didn't need to take it upstream. But it's, so it's <clears> changed <throat> surprisingly little. And, and as someone who's new to MM, like, I did not want to touch it. So um, I guess if everybody's like, yeah, go ahead and break it, let's do it. No, you're going to break my 20-year-old patch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is kind of a mess. Um, at least I, I, for people unfamiliar with the code, I think it doesn't match a lot of the other kind of data structures in the kernel. L Liam did, for the record, he did, he did whisper to me as walking up. He said, it does, it does sound like a maple tree. I just want to get that on the record. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I'm, I'm going to agree that the data structure is horrible, and especially traversing the tree is essentially, I think you do a depth first search or something like that, just traversing the tree, it's like absolutely insane. If you just want to have some range walk, yeah. you traverse like almost the complete tree. So uh, any work on that would be highly appreciated. Uh, and I mean, don't be scared to break it. We're going to fix it. 
Well, maybe, maybe now is not the time to say this, but I'm, I'm taking a new job in a couple of weeks. So. <laughs> so, so, so please tell your new employer that you want to fix that. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Well, I, I appreciate, I, I mean, I agree. I, I, it was definitely, does anybody see a path to solve my problem without all the hard work? At least, no. at least for like a kernel release? Like I promise I'll fix it later. No, no I think no, I think I think uh, like, like like Willie was saying. Like I think we just need to, if insert resource does the wrong thing, gets confused, you you might just need to do insert resource on smaller granularities just to just to match the current constraints. Like yeah. it's a, as a temporary hack, it'll, 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 you might end up with like instead of one big CFMWS, you'd have like yeah like a, a like a series of CFMWS entries in there. I mean, you um, could you could. You could, uh, our, our, our CXL ACPI driver could say, oh, well, this already exists, you know, at this point, and so we can just create a, a sub CFMWS region. I don't know if people would be, I don't remember if I tried that or not. I don't think it'd be a sub, it'd, it'd, it'd just be, a, it'd be a, like an artificial sibling. Yeah, I mean, the thing you'd run into, though, is potentially you could hot unplug or whatever, remove this region later, and then you end up in this weird case where we weren't actually tracking that this was a CFMWS allocated area and if you try and add it back late I don't I don't think in practice it'll be an issue but it's not it doesn't tell the whole truth at that point yeah, yeah. I mean yeah uh, sorry this all seems really complicated I, I wasn't playing paying attention to the first half of this talk because I was trying <laughs> to deal with all the M share comments that are coming in um, I appreciate it, your honesty it, you know it, you just weren't that important to me um. <laughs> uh, but it seems to me like the, the whole problem is that IMM resource is the wrong size like it, it ends too soon and I, I don't remember where we set up our IMM resource or why but at the point where we discover CFMWS zero surely that is our cue oh hey IOM resource is too small and we need to just enlarge it yeah yeah one of one of the how we got here was and maybe this was a mis mistake or, or something we could re revisit was uh, wanting to allow it to be discovered late um, and because otherwise yeah we can certainly go in and before we parse the memory map like the first thing you do is parse this other ACPI table and insert that first and then insert like the, the, then it went to work but then yeah but then we're touching the boot code which we, which we can do um, but it, it seemed to be a nice property that modules later can be like oh this actually the address map I have more I have more information now let me go update the address map that seems like a nice thing for Linux to have in general yeah um, it also makes backporting easier, but nobody. I, I, sorry, sorry, I said the B word, but, um, but yeah. Yeah, that was the original intent. Uh, at least I thought the most value was you can mod probe CXL ACPI some later point and and on whatever system, right? And all of a sudden, this all appears. And I'm I'm, I'm totally cool with that. So yeah, we can go in and re resize uh, IOMAP uh, resource at that IOMAP yeah. resource at that time. That's okay. that's cool with me. All right. Well, if nobody's uh, disagreeing on the bridge, then I can give you back uh, one minute. <laughs>